Uh, I'm from London. I'm very jet lagged, so it's very much good night. Uh, how is everyone? Yeah, thank you for that. So, uh, thank you very much for coming along. I'm going to be talking about rocking the lattice, about two technologies, cloud rocker and lattice. My name is Colin Humphreys. I am the CEO of Cloud Credo. We are a Cloud Foundry and Bosch consultancy based in London. Um, I'm speaking with uh, a very good friend of mine, Mr. James Bayer from Pivotal. Hello. <clears throat> He's going to be giving the second half of this talk. He's going to be trying to use my Linux laptop. So that's going to be very amusing for everybody, watching him try and move between applications. So good luck with that, James. Thank you. OK, so I want to start this with a question. What is an application? And I feel this is a very relevant topic for this conference. So we're talking a lot about pushing code and source code, but we're also talking about containers a lot. So what actually is an application? I think there's value in pushing source code. You push the code, as you're used to doing that, CF push. You push your code into uh, Cloud Foundry. Cloud Foundry then uh, has a look at the code, combines it with a build pack, and produces a container. So there's definitely value in that. There's also value in pushing containers. You have a known, good, tested artifact that has all your dependencies baked in. So what's the right thing to do? I don't know. As I just alluded to, Cloud Foundry has two jobs. And these are actually very clear, distinct jobs. It has the first job, which is staging, where it takes your application code, combines it with a build pack, produces a droplet. And the second job, which is running, where it schedules that droplet to be run inside of containers, and that's where it's scaled and has the services brought in behind and rooted and all of that kind of thing. But these are two distinct jobs. So I pose the question, do we want to take our applications on the left-hand side? And I apologize for my incredibly bad diagram. This is what happens when you use Linux as a desktop. You get diagrams like this. So we have the application being pushed into Cloud Foundry, a droplet is produced and deployed. So that uh, uh, pathway to production versus the application being built locally into a container and then the container being pushed into production. So we have what's on the left and what Cloud Rocker and Lattice give us is what's on the right. So we do our staging locally. And I think there's value in doing this. We get fast feedback about whether our application uh, has staged correctly. If staging fails or there's an issue with the build pack, it's easy to diagnose it. We also create this artifact that is known good, and that artifact can be moved between environments, can be moved down your CI pipeline. So, <clears throat> You're all thinking, stop talking, Colin. Show me how to actually do this. So let's have a look at how this process works. Firstly, installation. So. <clears throat> this uh, is an, uh, a directory with a uh, Java application inside it. This is my Java app. I have uh, uh, very straightforward set of files that comprise a Hello World Java app. Now, if I want to install Rocker, I can go get. Very straightforward. It's go. This installs the go binary. So we've now got the rock uh, command line tool available to us. 
we take a quick look at Rock. This is the API you can use. So we see a few things we can do there. The first one we're going to want to do is to download the Cloud Foundry base image. So we would run Rock this. Now, I'm not going to actually run that command because that would pull down a 500 megabyte image, which is the same Cloud Foundry base image that's used to uh, power all the Cloud Foundry applications running in a normal Cloud Foundry setup. Uh, I don't trust the conference Wi-Fi to let me do that in a reasonable period of time. So I've already done that on this machine. So I have a Java app. I need to have the build pack available to me locally. So if I run rock build packs, we can see that I've already added the Java build pack. If that wasn't here, I could just do rock add build pack and then a URL where I can go and get a build pack from. So the GitHub repositories of any of the open source Cloud Foundry build packs will work here. And it will pull them down and add your build pack. So as we have the build pack ready and the app, let's run this. Very simply, rock up. So what this is actually doing now, it started a container in Docker that's running the same staging process that would run inside of Cloud Foundry, but it's doing it on my local machine. It's using the, um, uh, the Java build pack, which we've got installed, combining that with the application code. And again, these logs are exactly the same logs that we fired out by the build pack with normal Cloud Foundry staging. So that's now completed. That's running. You see there the bottom line, connect your running application at localhost 8080. So there is the application staged and running locally. In case you hadn't noticed, quick look there, a little bit of unsubtle advertising. So <clears throat> we've installed, we've rocked the application locally. What happens if you want to take this container <coughs> away from your local machine, deploy it to production, maybe move it down your CI pipeline, do something else with it? So we can do that too. Very simply, rock build, and then we give this a tag. So, if I could type. So I've given this my user at Docker Hub and Java test as the name of the application. This is staging the application, and then it's gonna build us a container which we can push up to the uh, Docker registry. So it's done our staging, and now it's actually creating the container uh, uh, Docker file. In just a second, it will start running through that Docker file, building us that container. So we can see a series of steps there that have been run that are building our, our container that can be exported and run. As you see there, step number nine is the command that actually starts the Java application, complete with double quotes and everything. There was a lot of pain to actually build, but now that's working. So with this, we could then run um, Docker push type. We could push this now to the Docker registry um, I'm not going to do that again because of conference Wi-Fi. But we've built 
our container, which we can then work with however we choose. <clears throat> so you can push it to an application, uh, to a registry. So all the code for this is available on GitHub in the Cloud Credo account. This is an idea of the direction CloudRock is going in. So we're going to add Rocket AppC containers. We're going to improve the environment variable handling because it's not exactly the same as Cloud Foundry at the moment. It's an area that needs a little bit of work. I'd love to have a single command push to Lattice so you can just build the whole thing locally and it goes straight into a local Lattice setup. At the moment, this will only run a single application on your local machine. So if you're doing microservices, it won't currently work. We've got lots of small services talking to each other, but we're working on that. That's very simple to fix. And as you may have noticed, my laptop is Linux, so this works natively. I don't have a fantastic journey for Mac users at the moment. I'm providing a vagrant virtual machine, which gives you a Linux-like environment, and then I'm uh, mapping in um, directories. So I'm going to hand over to James. Thank you very much. Thank you, Colin. Uh, we were really excited to see what Colin was able to do in a pretty short amount of time with, with uh, Cloud something. It was called something else. Cloud Rocker, right? It was always Cloud Rocker. Called Cloud Rocker. Um, he could type these fun commands like uh, rock up and rock this. And it was pretty, pretty fun to type um, back in the old days. Um, so it, it leads to the question, uh, what, the, uh, what can you do with once you rock, rock up something and rock build? And what that is Lattice. Well, <clears throat> we wanted to build something that was incredibly fun to use with Lattice. And something that we had heard back from people that had tried Cloud Foundry is it, it was a steep hill to climb. Because the first experience, the five to 10 minute experience with Cloud Foundry was, all right, first you get to go learn Bosch. And if, like me, back in the day when I first started using Cloud Foundry, um, I was uh, working in a Java EE server vendor at the day. And uh, the first thing it said is, uh, gem install something. And I'm, gem? I, I don't, what's that? What's a gem? Because I'd only ever worked with Java. And so you have to go learn about all this stuff, and you're, several weeks later, you might have your Cloud Foundry up and running if you're a typical Java developer. So that's not that great of an experience. So we wanted to bring a 10 to 15 minute experience to, to put Cloud Foundry technologies into people's hands. And I can tell you that we actually, in my view, succeeded on this. So Lattice is really fun and simple to use. <clears throat> One way of talking about it is it's just enough Cloud Foundry. We're still actually very opinionated on the Cloud Foundry team that we think Bosch is the way that you can do production operations the best. And so we still are very much a believer in that. But if you want to introduce this technology to people, if someone has a Docker image and they just want to run it, in a Cloud Foundry-like environment with Cloud Foundry technology, do they really need to start there? And the answer is no, not with Lattice. It's just enough Cloud Foundry. Um, <laughs> Andrew Schaefer uh, got, put, put together a metaphor for, for some people that were asking questions about uh, the difference between Cloud Foundry and Lattice. And he's like, Cloud Foundry is a fully operational battle station. It, has every bell and whistle operational experience you need. It runs on all the virtual machines split out and, and by default in, in CF release. If you do that, everything's kind of scalable. And if you look at Lattice, it's really a little bit less than that. It's something that, and probably a better metaphor is maybe a Star Destroyer and a TIE Fighter, but um, this one works pretty good too. So Lattice doesn't have all of the things that Cloud Foundry does, but that's okay because on a laptop, you don't need all of the things that Cloud Foundry has and you want a simpler experience. And so when I talk about Cloud Foundry by subtraction, which is uh, one of the things Unsee referenced today in this Diego talk, you, you get Diego, so we're gonna get clustered scheduling of containers. And on your laptop, you really only need one uh, virtual machine for that, but you can, you can scale up and have a cluster. So everything that Diego can do is gonna be inside of Lattice. You get the Go router, so now all the very nice DNS-based load balancing for your applications, if you scale up several containers, um, will load balance the, to those, and that's really nice. You get Logger Gator, so you get all the streaming logs from your containers if you scale up to 10, 15 containers 
for an application, you're going to get all those in one place. And really nicely, you don't have to deal with Bosch as your first experience. You can just do Vagrant up, or if you have even a DigitalOcean, Amazon, OpenStack, or Google Cloud account, you can use Terraform, Terraform Apply, and in several minutes have an, a cluster up and running. So we won't have Bosch, and importantly, you're missing out on a couple of other things. We've taken away the cloud controller, so on your local laptop, it really doesn't matter that uh, whether you have, you don't really want multi-tenancy, you're the only tenant, you're cluster root, so you're not gonna be sharing your laptop with lots of people. Um, if, you're, if you have a, a DigitalOcean account and you spin it up to five VMs, you don't necessarily wanna share that with uh, your whole organization, it's just for a, a small team of people. Um, you don't need quotas and um, the marketplace and all the other stuff that comes with Cloud Controller, you just wanna run your Docker image. And we also uh, took away the UAA. So the enterprise security and login, the OAuth server, um, also a Java component, that, taking that away saves a lot of uh, footprint and uh, hassle as well when you just wanna get up and running quickly. So let's take a look at some of the commands that we have. So it's, it's a very similar to, to the CF command line. This is a command line, and we'll, we'll show you an actual demo in a second. But you look there that, um, well actually, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's just use Colin's example. So let's clear this off. And LTC list. You guys see that okay? So you can see we're just running a couple of um, uh, containers already on this instance. Um, and let's go ahead and see if we can just run Colin. So he, you guys saw him, he called one called Java test, right? So let's type LTC, create Java test, hat of monkeys. I have no idea what the heck that's all about. And Java test. So what we're doing here is we're taking the Docker image that already has gone through all the build pack processing. It's already pre-built, so we don't have to um, build that on the server side this time. And there we go. Now the application's up and running. Let's go ahead and, uh, I forget how you did this, Colin. Oh boy, the Linux laptop hilarity is coming one. out. Oh yeah, right, right click. Oh, right click. Yeah. Copy link address, oh my goodness, go. we can do it. Repair programming. <laughs> Control T, yeah, control, what v. is it? Oh, V, yes. There you go. So it's the same app that, that Colin uh, showed you in, uh, but this can be run against a scheduler. I mean, and so you can be running it against lots of lattice containers. So let's do uh, LTC visualize. So there you can see I'm running on one cell and I've got three containers running. If I wanna scale this up, LTC scale Java test. Let's go up to three containers. And scaling this up, um, it just takes just a moment. And what we're gonna be doing is basically Diego does the scheduling uh, for you, just like uh, Ansi showed earlier in his talk, so that works. So you do LTC status, Java test. And now we're running those three separate images. It's kind of interesting here, you can see how we do the port mapping for you. So all these containers are listening on 8080 inside, but we're getting different uh, ports assigned to them on, on the host that they're running. And then the Go router is automatically doing the load balancing for you. So it's a pretty straightforward to do that. Let's go back to the uh, presentation here. We also wanted to uh, put a little bit of a UI on top of Lattice. And so Pivotal has been working on something uh, called X-Ray. And let's go ahead and go look at that. You saw that was one of the applications that was running on Lattice when I first typed LTC list. And so what Colin did was he used Cloud Rocker. It's just a Node.js app, this one we're gonna show you here, this thing called X-Ray. So Colin created a Docker image out of X-Ray and it's just another app that you can push on top of Lattice. So going back, let's uh, go check at the uh, LTC list here. And I'll just do status x-ray. And there is what I want to do. Oh boy, Colin, you and your Linux. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Control shift C. Control shift C, oh boy. It's a secret code, there you go. Control T, control V, look at all this. I'm getting good. <clears throat> so, 
This is a really uh, simple user interface on top. So you can just do some, some simple things to visualize what's going on in your lattice uh, cluster. So if you had more cells, you can see that they would be scaled out underneath here. And you can have availability zones and everything. So if we were running on a full AWS image, we would have that fill up the page with a whole bunch of stuff and do a demo. But if I go here and just um, LTC scale Java test one to get rid of stuff, you'll see that uh, quickly already scaled down to one container there. So if I hover over here, you see Java test. Uh, and these are the, the Ruby Sanity, and there's the X-ray process itself. It's monitoring itself. So um, X-ray is something we're going to add um, new capabilities to over time. But what we really wanted to do was visualize what's happening in your lattice cluster so you could see it really easily. And this is an open source um, project that you can also get on GitHub. And so what have I seen at uh, Pivotal for people using Lattice? I've seen an explosion of interest in making the, the technology much more accessible to developers. So especially the, the Spring uh, team has done a lot of, of neat stuff with it. So you might have seen some talks here from uh, Matt Stein and some others on uh, using Spring Cloud and some of the Netflix OSS things. So imagine uh, like a dynamic con configuration server where you're distributing configuration to your containers that are running but you want to change something dynamically, let's say like a log level or something like that, that's a component you can run with Spring Cloud as a container on Lattice and then have another app use that. If you want to use um, Hystrix and some of the other uh, load balancing technologies, that's also built in there. The Spring Cloud's done some, team has done some really neat stuff with that. The Spring Batch team has made it um, such that you can now expose a new Diego primitive. Um, Diego has this primitive called a task. A task is actually how applications are staged. It's not a long running process. It's a one time batch process that, that will have a lifetime and then end. And so Spring Batch is this technology a lot of enterprises are using. And so they've hooked up Spring Batch to Lattice so that every time you want to run a new batch job, it schedules a Diego task. So now you can have your, your tasks in Lattice um, being scheduled by Spring Batch, which is pretty cool. And the Spring XD team has done some really neat demos where scaling up your Spring XD streams, for these are streams of data coming from things like the Twitter firehose and other places, and then piping them to other things and uh, doing some processing on those. Every time you run a Spring XD stream, it will create a new Diego task for you. And they've got that working with Lattice. And this one is really cool. Mark Croft, Mike D'Alessio up here, and the team from uh, the New York team from Pivotal. And then there's others involved in CenturyLink. And HP announced some things as well. They're con contributing some things for Windows. You can actually run Windows containers with Lattice as well. So just like how you have Linux applications, which is what we were just demoing, Windows applications can run side by side with the Linux applications. And let's see if we can go see a, a JSON example of that to prove to you that I'm not making that. Do I still have that up here, Colin, or is that closed now? Is it in the, if you, if you tab to the next one, so you will tab to the, I'll tab. keep going. Oh, don't know, keep tabbing. This one? Yeah, try that one. All right. Is it the second one along? There we go. So you're actually seeing, this is a, uh, an output of the <coughs> long running process that we have of Mark's cluster that has the Windows server and a Linux server running side by side. And you see the root FS is the Windows Server 2012 instance. And so you can plug in these Linux images and, and and uh, Windows uh, servers side by side and schedule the containers um, for both Linux apps and Windows apps in the same Lattice technology. And the last thing uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about is uh, we have a team doing some, some hacking on, on Diego itself. Um, when we're working with um, trying new things in Cloud Foundry, we found it's really fun to just start with something small like Diego. And so we've had teams like that are sending custom metrics to the loggergator um, firehose from their application. So I call this the foo metric. So imagine you're tracking signups or you're tracking some other thing that's not just about your memory or, your, or a, a, a standard metric that comes out of your container. It's something that, that's related to a business aspect of the application. You can send that to loggergator and Lattice, and there's a demo of a team consuming that um, off the firehose as well. So that's pretty cool. Now you can have your applications sharing metrics that they're producing and having uh, other applications consume those. 
And with that, uh, I'll just show you that uh, we have a, a proper mailing list on the Cloud Foundry uh, community. Uh, so it's cflattice at list.cloudfoundry.org. Uh, there's a Twitter handle there. There's some really cool Lattice t-shirts that Andrew Schaefer has available if you want to want to get those. And then you can also join the and contribute on the project. It's, a, it's an incubation right now. And I think we're ready for questions. OK. Any questions? There's two over there. OK. Great question. So the question is, if you wanted to do something um, in Lattice and you get it working there, how translatable is that to getting it working in Cloud Foundry? So today, Lattice only speaks Docker images. What we're working on, and, and we want to be able to have uh, Lattice understand droplets as well. So one of the things that Cloud Rocker does is produce um, a, a full Docker image from your application source code. Well, what if we went the intermediary way? This is, if you looked at what, what Heroku did last week, they kind of did the same kind of thing, where their CLI tooling will, um, you run a Docker image locally, but when you push that to Heroku, they actually just upload the droplet part. They call it a slug. So we're looking at something like that, that way that if you're a developer and you don't want to know anything about Docker because you just have your Java code and you don't want to think about Docker because that's one more thing you got to think about, we want a path for that to work well on Lattice as well. And then that's also translatable to Cloud Foundry. So that, it's something like that where very, you can just take your application source code, get it running on Lattice, and then also get that running on Cloud Foundry. And that should be a seamless experiment, experience. Uh, could you please elaborate on the um, metrics that you can collect from the container? I, I couldn't hear that, unfortunately. Let's see if I can. Can someone else uh, oh, repeat the question, maybe? Um, is it better now? Yeah. I guess so. Just about. Uh, could, could, you you please, uh, could you please elaborate on the metrics that you can collect from uh, f uh, with the lattice from the container? No. Metrics? metrics? Oh, elaborating the metrics. Okay. So um, let me see. Like, so there's some neat, the metrics coming out of um, the, the, the log aggregator firehose, basically, right? So with Diego, we're, we're sending the container metrics that you, if you ever saw the stats endpoint in the cloud controller for applications, it'll show you the CPU, the memory, and the disk footprint. So you're going to get those for free um, with, uh, by just listening on the log aggregator firehose. What another team has done is, Let's, um, they started producing metrics directly to Loggergator from their application. And so that would be a custom metric that they make up. And uh, so let's say it's the number of signups in your application you want to track or the amount of revenue you've sold or something that day. Um, you can send that metric along to the fire hose and it's a structured thing as opposed to a log message which is going to be um, just a, you know, kind of an opaque thing. You can send a structured value that downstream applications can interpret and understand exactly that value. Oh, this is a gauge, or it's a value, or it's an error of some kind, right? That's the kind of thing I'm talking about, is being able to send those structured metrics down the pipeline. Okay, okay I think we're about done. Yeah. All right, thanks so much. Thank Appreciate you your much. time.